looking out onto my eyelashes in an agony of delightful anticipation. Listen to them, the children of the night. What music they make. <laughs> From the DNA Studios, welcome to episode one of the Dracula Podcast. I am your host, Lawrence Burgess, or LB for short. Thank you to my producer, Adam Stover, Rob, and Martha of Southgate Media, and most of all, you for listening. We aim to bring you thoughtful and stimulating media reviewing the films, books, music, and plays that make Stoker's creations so beloved and the criticism to inform your purchasing decisions. We'll bring you interesting guests and inform you on the needs of our communities. Please send us your questions and comments to Dracula Audio, no spaces at Twitter or emails at audio.dracula at gmail.com. Once again, that's Dracula Audio, no spaces on Twitter or emails at audio.dracula at gmail.com. We will do our best to respond to queries by what you send us or respond to them directly on the show. Thank you again and welcome. My sincerest appreciation goes out to all of you for listening and joining in. Uh, we hope you took a chance to listen to our introductory episode. If not, check out the Southgate Media homepage at southgatemediagroup.com. There you can find us all over the place at iTunes, Libsense, and a whole mess of other places around the friendly interwebage. We're going to introduce you this week to Penny Dreadful, an unmatched show in its quality and thoughtful narrative. We're going to save the spoilers for next episode, but we're going to give you a healthy introduction to this show on this episode. So the 10-episode second season of Penny Dreadful premieres on May 3rd, that's two days before Cinco de Mayo, at 10 p.m. on Showtime. And honestly, it is fantastic. And we're going to prepare you for the second season and touching on each episode chronologically. But don't worry, we'll proceed each one by the tagline, spoilers. So you might be unfamiliar with Penny Dreadful. Shame on you. Season 1 of Penny Dreadful on Blu-ray, don't buy DVD. It's available for $21.99 from Amazon.com. If you don't like buying online, because I know a lot of you are afraid to do so, and, and look, I've met a ton of folks who still don't buy online. I don't understand it, but we're going to give you another method to buy the show. Walmart and Best Buy price match. Just tell them it's $21.99 from Amazon, and they will price match. They want your business. They want your cabbage. Don't fall for a slightly lower price on DVD. There's a big difference from 720 to 1080p, and there are tons of details that we don't want you to miss. Dish the DVD and buy the blue. So, Penny Dreadful. It was created by John Logan, who is the EP along with Sam Mendez. Mendez is probably the more recognizable name, as he's known for his directorial work on American Beauty, Road to Perdition, Skyfall, and the upcoming Spectre which I loved Skyfall, and I think Spectre should be just as good. Logan, the man, the heart of the thing, his screenwriting credits include Any Given Sunday, Gladiator, The Last Samurai, Hugo, and Skyfall. Yes, Any Given Sunday. We'll claw for that inch! It's that one. Yes, that one. The show stars Ava Green, Josh Hartnett, Timothy Dalton, Harry Treadaway, Roy Kinnear, Reeve Carney, and Billy Piper. The first episode, also produced in conjunction with Sky Atlantic, who has a very awesome YouTube page, was released in May of 2014. So, the gist. This thing succeeds where so many have failed in combining great Victorian literary characters from Frankenstein, the picture of Dorian Gray, and Dracula into one great show. The theme of the thing is duality, but it's more than that. It talks about the evil inside of us. Recognizable characters include Victor Frankenstein and his creature. But honestly, kids, it's Ava Green which steals the show. Every award denied to her is a crime against humanity. She is so good and so utterly groundbreaking in her performance. She's doing things with her character, Vanessa Ives, that audience haven't seen before from an actor or anywhere else. There is no one who embodies such dark intelligence warped sexual prowess, and sharp strength in Ava Green in this performance. This show is so well-crafted that your oft-forgotten or overlooked names like Timothy Dalton, Bond, 
or Josh Hartnett, who you may have thought is just a teen actor, are dynamic, complex, and interesting. Each frame is a work of art, and John Logan has something special here. And if you're part of Penny Dreadful and you're listening to me, you've outdone yourself. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. You've got a great show. And for folks who love literature and love good things to watch and consume, if you don't watch Penny Dreadful, then the terrorists will win and you don't love America. Seriously, that's how much of a disservice you're doing to yourself by not watching. So get the Blu-ray today. No excuse. So we're going to get into our inbox and we're going to answer a few questions. And if you email our show, please sign it as you want your name read or else we won't give away the name. So here we go. The first question is unsigned. It reads, what did you think of the Dracula movie with the guy who was barred in The Hobbit? It's not signed. So the emailer is actually referring to Dracula Untold, released in 2014 and starring Luke Evans. It took a beating at the box office, and often by critics, and we're going to get to that in the latter part of this episode, so stay tuned. The second is from Jim in Massachusetts. Hi Jim, and thank you for listening. It reads, Can you tell us any more about your Dracula audio project? I certainly can, and I'm extremely happy to. So I told you a little bit of the history about it on the introductory episode. But what it is, is we're doing a fully dramatized audio version of Stoker's novel, complete with a full voice cast, sound effects, and musical score. It's big, it's loud, I'm not sure if we can compare it to anything in literature because it hasn't been done before. The thing's gonna be well over 16 hours. It's got a remarkable cast, and I'm gonna go through a few of them today. One of the reasons why we did Dracula was... We love girl power. There are a few tales made from that era which emphasize feminism and the strength of solid female characters. And to further elaborate on that, here is my dear, dear friend, the lovely Andrea Parkins. Mina is such an interesting character, and Stoker wrote her that way. I think that she, at times, has been in the past honestly been neglected um, I think she's just a fascinating character really uh, Stoker was really kind of ahead of his time for um, the way he wrote her because she was so important there's no question in my mind that um, the group all the characters you know, Van Helsing and all the rest of the men they would not have found they would not have caught up to, to Dracula had it not been for Nina and everything, the intelligence and reconnaissance that she carried with her on a daily basis, um, that she added to their search and added to just logistics. She, she was hugely vast. It's not just the, the supernatural connection that she had with, uh, with Dracula um, through her encounters with him. It was, it was because she was one smart cookie and she thought everything through and it, that was just fascinating to me. And the fact that he also wrote her as a really loving, interesting person who cared. She had a great deal of compassion. And again, um, as I mentioned before, if it wasn't for Nina stressing the need for peace, um, I think that this story would have ended very differently. And I can tell you her performance of Mina Harker is nothing short than amazing. She had so many things she had to pull off. She had to pull off her brilliance, her romanticism, her kindness. There is no one who could have done such a thorough and dominant job and made Mina her own. Uh, We love Andrea to death, and we were so blessed to have her. If you have a chance to watch Andrea or listen to her, and I, I highly encourage you to go out and see her work. She does a lot of local things. Andrea was in Les Miserables. She was in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. She's done so much good work around here, and the first time I heard her was actually in our audition, and she auditioned cold. Actually, it was a remote audition, and Adam just gave her a few general notes, and she just blew it out of the water. And again, I'm so appreciative of my cast, and that's just, that's just one character. Ethan Livers played Jonathan Harker. Joshua Drew played Dr. John Seward. 
Andrea Parkins, Wilhelmina Harker, John Johnson as Abraham Van Helsing. We've got Megan Jett as Lucy Westenra, Andy Walker as Lord Arthur Holmwood, Brent Kessinger as Quincy P. Morris, and a whole boatload of other names inside. Lauren Allen, Kenny Bass, Brent Batten, Sean McCracken, Aaron Murphy, Trudy Oliver, Cassandra Phelps, Caroline Rainey, Aubrey Roberts, the list goes on and on, Dave Tackett, and a lot of these folks played multiple roles. And I'm so appreciative of their efforts. Thanks so much to my wife, who gave me all sorts of good counsel. Michael Nost, who gave me excellent advice. From the Alban Arts Theater, to Michael Pless, to Digiso, to kind words given to us by Dacre Stoker, and the help given by our volunteers, such as Ed Toller. It's amazing. Special, special, special thanks to Michael Campbell as our EP, Greg Hunt, who's mastering and doing our music. Producing by Jason Riffle and my right hand, my partner, Adam Stover, who was my AD and the producer on this thing. It was truly an honor to work with such talented and magnificent people who lent me their dynamic voices and their creativity and their work and their heart and their spirit. It's going to be released quarter three of 2015. We're going to prepare a trailer for you as soon as everything's locked down. We're going to have a big, huge release party. We're going to have dramatic ratings. We're going to play the score live. There's going to be a lot of things that's going to be released in conjunction with this thing. And keep in touch with us. Listen to this podcast. And if you see a member of our cast and crew out, give them a high five. Seriously, they deserve it. They've done the best work you can do in audio. We're breaking ground. And I'm so proud to have my name attached to this thing. Every single one of them should have to be too. Thank you again so much. So that, Jim from Massachusetts, is my long-winded answer. There's going to be a lot attached to it. And thank you so much for your email. We really appreciate it. Keep listening to the show. You ready over there? All right, I'm ready over here. Here we go. It's news from around the globe starring our count. Our beloved Count Dracula, he's all on the news because he's such a nice man. He really is. Dracula is such a, such a snuggy bear. All right, from across the pond at our friends at West Britain. This is actually from the westbritain.co.uk. And the title is Beware, He Is Coming, a one-man show. The team that brought you the award-winning Great Expectations have got their teeth into Bram Stoker's classic vampire tale. It's written by Andrew McPherson, director Simon Harvey, and the, quote, outrageously versatile, unquote, David Min, or Mine, M-Y-N-N-E. It's a one-man performance of Dracula. I've actually never heard of such a thing. This is really interesting. Uh, it's suitable for ages 12 and up. You can see it 8 p.m. on Wednesday, February the 18th at Falmont's Poly, 8 p.m. on Friday, February 20th at St. Austell Arts Theatre and 7.30 p.m. on Saturday, February 21st at the Center, Newland. This is really interesting. If you guys happen to catch this from our folks over the pond, our friends in Great Britain, please send us info. Tell us how it is. We really want to know. And we have another one. This is from the Chattanoogan.com. So if you're around here, please let us know. The Signal Mountain Playhouse. This is actually a spoof called Dracula the Musical. It's on February 13th, 14th, 20th, 21st, 27th, and 28th at 8 p.m. at the Mountain Arts Community Center at 809 Kentucky Avenue, just off the main Mountain Highway. Tickets are 15 bucks, cash or checks. And you can also be reserved by calling the MACC at 886-1959. Starts at 6.45 p.m. Appropriate for all ages. So thank you to the Chattanooga for that piece of information. And this is from Bleeding Cool. It's the series Blood Queen vs. Dracula. It's produced by Dynamite Comics. And they have an interview on Bleeding Cool from Troy Brownfield, who's interviewed by Byron Brewer, talking about bringing classic characters together. And uh, I'm really interested in hearing about that too. So if you pick that one up, please let us know. Send us a tweet or email our show. So we've come to that portion of the program where we've reached our causes section, or one of the lights. Instead of pointing you to a specific website or a specific cause or need, I just want to remind you all something. 
Local food banks do a lot to assist communities. They help the hungry by giving back to the community. They serve many, many people. They take volunteers, but honestly what they need is they need more food. Right now where I'm living, we're in the midst of a snowstorm, and there are a lot of people going hungry. If you've ever known someone, or you've ever been in a situation where you yourself have been without, then you realize what a devastating and terrible thing it is to go without food. So my wish for you this week is to go and donate to the food bank. And let me tell you something, this really gets under my skin, and I'm going to go off topic a little bit here. But people usually donate to charity and to food banks around the holidays. Well, guess what, folks? Hunger, homelessness, and poverty aren't just a seasonal thing. They are around all the time. Your neighbors, the people in your community, everyone that you know in some way or another is affected by it. And if you don't know anyone who's affected by it, just drive a few miles, pick any direction you wish, and where I am, poverty is rampant. And guess what, folks? The government's not going to help. It's not a political party which is going to fix it. It's up to us as individuals. Only through our own strength, as people, as communities, can we help folks truly in need, okay? I'm going to look here at the Mountaineer Food Bank. The website is www.mountaineerfoodbank.org. And the mission statement is as the following. Generally, it's to alleviate hunger in West Virginia. Number one, to educate the general public of our existence and mission. Two, promote awareness of hunger in West Virginia. Three, to continue to develop and maintain a network for food acquisition, storage, distribution, and usage throughout the state. Four, to seek out and collaborate with other organizations who share the mission to alleviate hunger in the state. And if you've ever driven through West Virginia, folks, you know that poverty is not seasonal. It happens all the time. But guess what? There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Just like in Stoker's book, it's a very positive and uplifting, hopeful message despite all the dark that's in it. And if you're listening to the sound of my voice, please. I encourage you to visit, to donate to your local food bank, to find out how you can volunteer, to help people in need. We are all in this together. This is a common refrain. You're going to hear it over and over again, but there is really no such thing as the division of people. We are all connected. Take action today. Visit your local food bank. A simple Google search will do it. If you're in West Virginia, it's www.mountaineerfoodbank.org. You'll find the locations, you'll find the backpack programs, your hunters, your service areas. And folks, take action today. This isn't going to go away. But you know what? We can all make a difference. Do it today. And as promised, here we go. This is our weekly media review, or as Professor Van Helsing calls it, the ghastly paraphernalia of our beneficial track. We've heard so many outlets preaching to you about seeing a film or listening to an album, but it has no relevance to you whatsoever. We're all fans of Stoker's work, and each episode we're going to provide an in-depth analysis on a section of media, whether it be film, animation, print, art, sound, etc. Then we'll tell you if you should buy it, where you should buy it, and how you should buy it. Last week, we did an in-depth review of Dracula 1931. If you want to get our recommendation on that, I suggest you go check out the introductory episode we did last week. But this week is Dracula Untold, the latest theatrical release from Universal Studios. Dracula Untold was released theatrically in 2014. It was directed by Gary Shore, and it was written by Matt Sazama and Burke Sharpless. The cast includes Luke Evans as Vlad the Impaler slash Dracula, Sarah Gadon as Marina, and Dominic Cooper as Mahmed II. It had a budget of $70 million, and it did take a beating here at the domestic box office. It took in about $56.28 million. However, worldwide it was a bit more successful, with the total take, domestic and foreign, of 215 
529-201. Why didn't people go to see it? It's quite simple. The directing was bad, and the script was even worse. They took none of what made Dracula so good in the book. I'm going to spoil it a little bit for you here, but it's really not going to matter that much. They didn't use the Scholomance. The way they portrayed Dracula's vampirism is that it was passed on, and by doing so, they really weakened the character. And every great hero needs a villain, and Mahmed II, it could have been anyone. It falls into the Guardians of the Galaxy trap in that the villain doesn't matter. You could have replaced it with anyone. Mahmed II could have been William Wallace or George Washington. It really didn't matter who he was. Some of the special effects were interesting, but honestly, they took that from the Castlevania video games and the, the power he controls over bats and the medieval feel of it. The Order of the Dragon really isn't explored here. The savageness of Vlad the Impaler is also not explored here. What we're left with is Dracula slash Vlad of being a romantic hero, akin to the Jack Palance 1974 and Francis Ford Coppola 1992. Again, steering away from the book, which, to their detriment, they do. This is Gary Shore's theatrical directorial debut, and honestly, he could have done a much better job. And I'm not sure if it was the script or the studio, and I think it was the latter, because also Matt Sazama hasn't really done anything else. But guess what? The reason why this is so underwhelming is not Luke Evans. He did quite well for what he had to work with. This film wasn't meant to be a good film. This film was meant to start a franchise. And for doing so, <laughs> it misses the mark. And because it didn't pay attention to making a quality script now, rather than saving itself for later, it, it fails quite a bit. Shame on Universal. Universal wants to join the ranks of DC and Warner Brothers and Disney and Marvel in having a shared cinematic universe. And honestly, with this film, I don't see how it's going to happen. Dracula is supposed to be the bad guy, and he's not. What are you going to do for an antagonist with this large-scale cinematic universe? Are you going to do Lawrence Talbot? If you are, people really didn't like him in The Wolfman with Benicio Del Toro. People didn't like it. People also don't have a good feeling about the Frankenstein monster, and you remember that mess in 2004 known as Van Helsing. Universal really, really missed a mark here. So, how to consume it? Well, you don't need to buy it on DVD, and you don't need to buy it on Blu-ray. I would watch it once, but I would not pay money to do so. Wait for it to stream on Netflix or your favorite streaming services, whether it's Hulu or whatever else it may be. But do not buy this thing on DVD. Save your money. Buy something else. There are much better films out there. And there are much better versions of Dracula out there. Well, folks, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much to my producer, Adam Stover, and Drake's Nest Entertainment for helping me host this show and make it as good as it is. Thank you to Rob and Martha of Southgate Media for having such an excellent product and giving me the chance to host my little forum and get on my soapbox. And most of all, folks, thank you for listening. And there's so much more to come. We had a couple interviews scheduled, but because of the weather, it, it's, it's nasty out there. It is foul. It is foul as the Van Helsing 2004 movie. No, in fact, it is fouler than Fifty Shades of Grey. That's how nasty it is outside. It is, it is just nasty. And as soon as this thing clears up, we're going to have some really great, spectacular interviews. We're going to take you to places that we normally don't go. We're going to talk to talent. We're going to talk to musicians. We're going to talk to authors. All those that make the genre so special. But again, thank you so much for listening. I sincerely appreciate your time. And to you and yours, have a most excellent day.